Behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and, and to, to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our King and Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore him. The psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 96, appearing on page 725 of the Book, Book of Common Prayer, Psalm 96, Cantate Domino. Let us recite this psalm responsively by half verse. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the whole earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations. And his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But it is the Lord who made the heavens. O oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence. O oh, the power and the splendor of his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord when he comes when he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father and, and to the Son and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. The first lesson this morning is a reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with the joy at the harvest as people exult when dividing plunder. 
for the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders. He is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson this morning is a reading from the letter of Paul to Titus, chapter 2. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Cannot hold you. 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, you Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Okay. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. On this night, with the setting of the sun, we begin our great feast, the 12 days of Christmas, which along with Holy Week and Easter form the two major marking points in the Christian year. On this night, and on this feast of Christmas, we, of course, celebrate and rejoice at the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, the incarnate Son of God. And we hear, as we just did with the reading of the Gospel, the story according to the Gospel of Luke about the circumstances and details of the birth of God's Son. One of the most astounding things about the story is that the first announcement of the birth of Jesus was made to shepherds. They were, by the time of Jesus' birth, not high up in the social standing. It was not like the days of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, when shepherding was the, the main business, if you will, of people. Now shepherds were hired out, they were not wealthy, they certainly were not educated. Um, they were sometimes looked upon a bit as ruffians, not entirely to be trusted around one's valuables. And yet it is to shepherds that the angels are sent to make the announcement of the birth of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. 
that tells us something very important about God and about who God sees and values. We know from scripture, both the Jewish scripture and the Christian scriptures, that God values the poor, the persecuted, the oppressed, widows, orphans, strangers. And that message that runs throughout scripture is reinforced with this account of the announcement to the shepherds. Now the other amazing thing is that when this announcement is made by the angels to the shepherds, they are told to go to Bethlehem and they are told where to find this child in a manger. The detail of the bands of cloth tell the shepherds that the child has just been born. The infant has been wrapped in swaddling bands, cloth, to comfort the child who has just emerged out into the world and to keep him warm and comfortable at this time in his life. And that that newborn baby will be found in a manger, in a stable, in a barn, Sometimes manger, sometimes stables were um, kind of makeshift affairs, almost lean-tos or perhaps a shallow cave, any place where livestock could get out of the, out of the uh, winds, out of the storms that would periodically blow through. The Son of God, and we hear this again and again, not born in a palace, the Son of God, born in a manger, and his birth announced to shepherds. That's only the beginning of the story. Once the angels have departed into heaven, the shepherds immediately turn to one another and basically say, we had to go see this thing. And they go tearing off into Bethlehem and find the stable and the child. They don't stop to get washed up. They don't stop to put on a change of clothes, even if they owned one. They just go. They go and they find the promised Messiah just as they are. And the reason I say that's the beginning of the story is because we are called like the shepherds to drop everything especially in these next 12 days, to really drop everything that otherwise occupies our minds, occupies our hearts, and turn our attention to go and find this incarnation of God, God in flesh, God becoming human and choosing to be born as a baby for us and to come to him as we are, without trying to gussy ourselves up, make ourselves look better or more than we are, but to bring the fullness of who we already are to the stable, to a place of shelter, and to a place of promise and hope. We are told that Mary treasured all this in her heart. It was as mysterious to her as the angel Gabriel's announcement to her that she would give birth to God's son. And now these shepherds appear out of the night and kneel in worship of her infant son. And they have a story to tell of angels filling the skies and terrifying them but bringing them good news of great joy for all the people. And Mary treasures these mysterious words in her heart. This is the beginning of the life of Jesus among us, a life that will meet its conclusion during the events of Holy Week and Easter. And we will eventually travel to the foot of the cross and to the empty tomb. But on this night and for these 12 days, 
We are to rejoice with the shepherds, with the angels, eventually with the wise men when they appear at Epiphany. We are to rejoice that God's promise of salvation, of God's promise that we who have fallen out of relationship with God, that we who have fallen out of relationship with one another will ultimately be restored, restored to relationship with God, restored to relationship with one another. And that the ultimate place that all of this is heading is summed up in the words of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. The promise that God would come to us was fulfilled in the birth of Jesus. The promise that we would be forgiven and restored to fellowship with God and with each other, that promise was fulfilled at the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And all through Advent, we tried very hard to remember that Advent moves us not just toward this moment, the birth of Jesus, but it moves us also ever closer to the moment when another promise will be fulfilled. And that promise is the return of Jesus Christ. That promise will be fulfilled in the words of Isaiah, when war shall be no more and when peace shall be established throughout the world. That is hope that is worth hanging on to with all our might. As in the words of the letter to Titus, remind us that we are even now being transformed as the people of God. We are even now participating in this movement toward God's ultimate promise. But on this night, we kneel with the shepherds we praise God with the angels and we ponder the mystery of what God has done in our hearts as Mary did in hers so long ago. Amen. Amen. I invite you to join us in the affirmation of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed found on page 120 in the Book of Common Prayer, page 120. I believe, believe in, in God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and, and earth, earth. I believe, I believe in, in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He, he will come, come again, again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. We entreat you, O Lord, that your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. We entreat you, O Lord, that there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Christopher, and all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. Almighty God, you have given your only begotten Son to take our nature upon him and to be born this night of a pure virgin. Grant that we who have been born again and made your children by adoption and grace may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the same Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. O God, the source of eternal light, shed forth your unending day upon us who watch for you that our lips may praise you, our lives may bless you, and our worship on the morrow give you glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you manifest in your servants the signs of your presence. Send forth upon us the spirit of love, that in companionship with one another, your abounding grace may increase among us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Prayers of the people this evening are given in Form 3, Form 3 appearing on page 
387 of the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those for whom continuing prayer has been requested, including Ron Mishko and family, Suzanne and family, Theodora DeBoz, Fran Myers and family, Sam Aubel, Liz Russo, Robert and Jean Wallace, Amy, Jim Pender and family, Janet, Jody and Juan, Brian Flory, Brittany, and for all who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to all the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, May with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.